Welcome back to Disc and Balls Golf Channel, where today we're doing a fly through of Live Oak Park Red in Ingleside, Texas. To begin, hole one is fairly short at only 220 feet and generally calls for a spike hyzer for the right handed player up over this right set of trees. If the wind is left to right, it's going to take a closer shot to the left side of the trees to get it to fade all the way back to the hole. But overall, it's a very reasonable birdie opportunity and in higher competition is pretty much a must get. One thing about Ingleside Red is that it has a ton of available airspace over the trees, which is why in most competitions they'll have uh, the two meter rule in effect to bring the risk reward into play. And at 346 feet, number two definitely brings that into play. Firstly, you wanna go through this initial gap if you are playing the low line and Generally, once you're through here, it opens up pretty wide and you get a very reasonable opportunity at the basket. Maybe not a great birdie putt, but easy par because as you get up to the front here or toward the basket, these trees overhang the front, which makes a higher putt difficult and uh, forces a, a low run if you are going for that birdie putt from that range. Hole number three is a 280 foot par three with the road as OB left and uh, generally plays as a big left to right, not quite dog leg maybe, but solidly left to right arcing hole. Uh, for the right handed player, a big forehand is optimal or a turnover. For the left handed player, it's almost a spike hyzer, assuming you get over this set of trees here. Uh, once you're past this set of guardian trees, it's a pretty open green and it gives you a you know, very reasonable opportunity, assuming you get there. Hole 4 is one of the nastier holes on the course as far as difficulty. It's 370 feet and because of the outstanding amount of rough that you have to throw over, generally it's going to be spike hyzer off the tee, uh, but most groups will send a spotter down to you know spot discs that get thrown over this this gap here. Uh, landing in this middle area is ideal. From there it's generally played as a par 3, you know, even from the tee. And you'll throw an upshot to the basket here, this is this general area, and hopefully save a par. Personally I've yet to see a birdie on this hole, but if you got the, the power, I'm sure it's possible. Hole 5 is just a ton of fun overall. It's very short at 183 feet, and most people will throw a thumber over the top, again bringing that 2 meter rule into play. But if you're not throwing the thumber, or maybe a tomahawk if you have it, you're going to be going down this gap here, which is narrower than it looks because of the angle that you're throwing from from the pad. If you can get past this initial set of trees, it opens up pretty nicely, giving you a reasonable birdie putt. And at 183 feet, you should generally be about basket high on this. Number six is deceptively tricky. At only 242 feet, it seems like it'd be very gettable all the time. But because of the left to right prevailing wind and pretty much a 90 degree dogleg right, it makes it much more difficult to get this into tap in territory. Uh, basically, straight ahead here, dogleg right with trees as defense. Uh, generally speaking, not that easy for a 242 foot hole. Number 7 is also short at 169 feet, but it's pretty much what you see is what you get. The basket is visible from the tee pad and almost everyone will go up over the top here. Uh, I don't think I've seen anyone competitively go down below. Uh, once over the top with either a thumber, a spike hyzer, or what have you. You're generally left with no more than a circle one putt for birdie. Despite being only 305 feet, hole number eight is a very difficult birdie hole. Uh, you can go high over the top, as with many of the holes here at Ingleside Red, uh, or you can go up the middle. There is a, an inside line right here, but that brings more trees into play, uh, but gives you a straighter shot if you get farther down the fairway. Uh, generally, if you go out to this right side and f you know fade one around the corner and get the skip or whatnot, you'll be left with a 40 to 50 foot upshot below these low hanging limbs. But from there, easy par. 
Hole number nine is very straightforward at only 231 feet, but it requires either a straight shot under the initial set of guardian trees or a left to right fading shot starting out over the road there, which is OB. Uh, if you go with this route that the drone is flying, it gives you a pretty reasonable birdie opportunity, but otherwise a bad kick can bring OB into play. Hole 10 is another challenging hole, frequently played for par. Generally what you'll see is a spike hyzer out into the opening area past this initial set of trees, or maybe a forehand for the right-handed player that skips up, assuming the grass isn't too long. Um, under this tree here, you get the open area I was speaking of, which leaves you another set of trees that needs to be thrown under or over to get to the basket. Uh, at 353 feet, there is a line up over that you can lay up for the birdie opportunity, but it is very challenging and the wind makes it inconsistent at best. At 161 feet, hole 11 is possibly the premier ace run of the entire course. The, the shot from the tee pad is very straight, but it does have a ceiling that you have to get under and that forces you to either run it pretty quick at the hole or to just play a little layup for the relatively easy birdie. In competitive rounds, this is another must get. While other holes were pretty straightforward, hole number 12 is literally straightforward at 414 feet. From the tee box, you want anything very straight down this caliche road and ideally as far as you can, giving you a reasonable right to left upshot. Uh, anywhere in the middle of the road gives you a nice solid clean you know, look at the basket to get your par. If you can blast one 400 feet down there straight, you might have a birdie chance. Hole number 13 is the longest hole at Live Oak Park Red at 497 feet. From the tee pad you just throw wildly out into an open field, leaving it short of the pond here. There are an assortment of ways you can get here. Just an easy spike kaiser, you can bomb one out to the edge, pushing the edge of the pond, or to the left here of those reeds to take less of the pond out of play, or more of the pond out of play. Uh, from there, you can either cross the pond or throw from where you ended up. A uh, big spike kaiser or other shot for the right-handed player. I will leave you at the basket here. Hole 14 is 364 feet and brings you back across the field you just threw over on 13. Generally off the tee you can throw it wherever you like, favoring generally the right hand side because the left hand gap left of this upcoming trash can is larger than the right hand gap. From there you throw just an upshot through the trees, sometimes over, and it gives you a reasonable par opportunity. Hole number 15 is 218 feet and gives you a high option that brings the 2 meter rule into effect or this straight shot almost directly straight at the basket. Uh, if you can make it through this initial gap, it opens up a bit on both significantly on the right but definitely on the left and if you can get it up near the basket it opens up dramatically to the left. Uh, from there you've got an opportunity at birdie assuming that you keep it under these low hanging limbs near the basket here. Other than that should be an easy par. Hole 16 is one of my favorite holes at Ingleside Red and it favors either a forehand from a right-handed player or a backhand on a left-handed player. It's only 154 feet but tends to get a good amount of ground play, whether it be flares or whatnot. Uh, once you get through this initial gap, you tend to flare toward the basket. There's not enough grass to really catch you generally, and it's a great pretty opportunity in general. Hole 17's tee pad doesn't line up with the line that you're generally going to throw it on. At 259 feet, most people will play a shot, an initial shot, through this gap here, this first gap. 
and it'll either fade out left into this opening or for a left to right shot it's generally going to cut toward these trees hopefully giving a, a clear line at the basket it is possible birdie with a right handed forehand through that gap that then fades out toward the basket but generally speaking par is solid here hole 18 is 273 feet and generally favors a left to right shot overall there is a much smaller line down the right side that brings trees into play forces a very low shot due to the ceiling but with the left to right shot you can get it around these trees and get it to finish toward the basket which is the ideal play and there you have it a full breakdown and fly through of the 18 holes of live oak red in ingleside texas as we look at this thrown away footage from hole 16 where I uh, basically got attacked by mosquitoes and couldn't swat the mosquito and maintain a fantastic drone flight at the same time. Anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the course.